Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to use S3 as a remote backend to store our Terraform TF state file. And also we are going to see how we can use this one collaboratively within the team. To demonstrate this one, I have already covered these three concepts in our previous video. Okay, it will be linked over here. If you are already aware, you don't need to go through with this one. I am going to explain this as an independent video. So we need to create a S3 bucket for the backend. Then we are going to see how we can use within the team. For this one, I have already written a Terraform script that is updated in the GitHub. Let me show you. So this is the GitHub repository. I am going to mention this in the description of this video. And over here, we have multiple files and I am talking about this remote backend demo. So these three are used in the previous lecture. If you want, you can go through with this one. Otherwise, you can directly proceed from here. You can just copy this code and you can execute it. But before that, let me explain what is this code. So first one is Terraform block. Over here, we are just mentioning the required provider is less than to 5 version. Before discussing about the backend, let's go and see this one. Provider, we are using AWS and we are creating an EC2 instance over here and we are creating an S3 bucket. Okay. So what is the S3 bucket name? This is the Velaxi Terraform state file. This is the bucket name. This bucket we are using it as a backend. So to define a backend, this is how you need to do backend S3 and we are specifying the bucket name and key. This is the location where we want to store our Terraform state file. It is going to create a directory structure called global S3 and it is under US East region. For your information, I have already created this EC2 instance and uh, this S3 bucket. You can just see this one over here. You can see a demo server and uh, our S3 bucket. This is the S3 bucket. At this moment, it is empty. And this I have ran it from my local system. That is where you can see that Terraform state file is available over here. And this is the code I have used. So I can append the code over here because we are just using the S3 bucket as our provider or you can copy entirely entire code and you can use it. But only change what you should do is this bucket name you need to change as I am already using this bucket name you cannot reuse this one. So to demonstrate this lab I am just copying the required snippet. So I just need this required snippet backend. So I am just copying till here onto my code. So this is the code and I am copying it under Terraform because it will come under to Terraform block. Okay. Whenever you add anything to the Terraform block, you just need to run the Terraform init command. So now I am going to run my command over here. So this is where we have this main.tf file and if I run Terraform init, okay, or I can run it over here itself, open the new terminal. Our existing terminal this was the existing terminal so clear the screen terraform in it so i'm just initializing it because i have updated content in the terraform block initializing the backend and you can see here do you want to copy the existing state into the new backend so we just added the new backend right so it is asking me that whether can I able to copy this one into the new backend. So if you give no, it doesn't create it. If you give yes, before giving enter, I will just show you in the S3 bucket. At this moment, we don't have any directory structure or state file. Okay, give yes. And uh, you can see here successfully configured S3 as a backend and uh, it has been copied and let me go on refresh this one so over here yes global and s3 and terraform dot state file it's just updated so to use backend as s3 okay you don't need to run the terraform plan or apply once you have updated the code just you need to do the terraform in it so that it will do the all the stuff okay so far so good now let's talk about the problem statement now you have committed your Terraform state file over here. Let's take that you have your colleagues who want to work on the same project. Then how the things will happen in the real world. So over here, okay, how Terraform state file work. This is what we have done so far. So we have written Terraform file on our local system and we ran the Terraform apply. It created an EC2 instance as well as S3 bucket as a backend. And also it created a Terraform state file that we have copied into the S3 bucket. This is what we have done. 
okay now let's take that your colleague also want to work on the same project then usually what we do in the real world we are going to share our terraform files through the version control system like github we will commit it over here and uh, our colleague or other team member is going to clone that repository into their system and they do their own modifications let's take that uh, here we have created an ec2 instance now he want to add security group he update that one and he commit i mean to say terraform apply he do which creates the security group whenever he do that one okay the terraform state file also get updated and that updated terraform state file should come into the backend okay anyway in our code we have configured in such a way it will come and update it over here so this is where the tricky interview question comes into the picture the interviewer might ask that okay you kept your terraform state file in the remote backend now let's take that multiple users are trying to update the infrastructure how you can make sure that your terraform file is correctly updated for that one you should not allow all the users to run the terraform apply command at a go that is where locking mechanism comes into the picture so we need to make sure that if one user is trying to apply the terraform command we need to lock that s3 bucket until the terraform apply command completely executed then only you should allow the other user to execute the terraform apply command even terraform plan also same thing should happen so whenever you are doing any operations make sure that you own this s3 bucket lock it do your operations once operations are over then only release it how you can achieve this one that is where i have updated my terraform code let me show you the terraform code so this is the terraform code which works like that okay you can use this one in your environments also backend with the team demo so over here for existing whatever code we have done so far same thing i have added if you want to use the latest version you can update it accordingly but i am using less than 5 version and you can see here backend earlier we don't have this one okay i will come over here before that i will show you provider we are using aws then we are creating aws ec2 instance then s3 bucket we are creating after that we are enabling versioning because in case if it is get corrupted we need to make sure that we can able to re retrieve the older version so this particular resource is going to help us to enable the versioning on our current bucket you can see here aws s3 bucket versioning enable on which bucket aws s3 bucket dot terraform state dot id so this is the bucket sorry we are calling like a variable yeah over here aws s3 bucket dot terraform underscore state dot id okay and we are just enabling versioning next thing is we are enabling the encryption on the s3 bucket to make it more secure so this resource helps us to enable the encryption on our s3 bucket next thing is we are making our s3 bucket as a private you can see here sorry so you can see here aws s3 bucket public access block so we are blocking public access on this s3 bucket next thing is we are creating a dynamo db table this is going to help us to lock our terraform file okay so we are creating a dynamo db table and make sure that you are using the same values and this name should be lock id it should be as it is next thing these two are outputs i don't think so this is required it is two times copied but these two things are we are just trying to output the s3 bucket name as well as the dynamo db table name all right and uh, this one we need to use it in our backend so if you scroll up over here you can see here dynamo table we are using this dynamo table and encrypt true so this is helps us to lock our s3 bucket while one user is executing now let me copy this code okay so i can copy entire code or i can update my existing code so in case if i want to update existing code this one i need to copy so it will be helpful to understand better if i update my existing code itself so first thing is under bucket s3 over here i am just copying this one next thing is we need to make sure that versioning and encryption is enabled and public access is disabled for that if i scroll down yep over here i'm just copying this one these snippets as it is we need to copy and the last one i just added extra i will edit and remove it anyway after this recording so i'm just copying it over here 
okay i think we are good and i will quickly run through what we are doing so we are taking the provider version over here and we are using s3 bucket as a backend and we are using locking mechanism by using dynamodb table and we are using provider as a aws creating an ec2 instance creating an s3 bucket and make sure that uh, before enabling the backend you must create an s3 bucket you cannot do both at a single terraform apply that is one challenge you need to make sure uh, you should enable it next thing is we are enabling the s3 bucket and uh, we are encrypting this bucket disabling the public access creating the dynamodb table and we are just getting the s3 bucket name and also dynamodb table name so let's save this file and uh, now let's run the terraform apply and we'll see what will happen terraform apply sorry i need to run in it because i have updated the terraform block so let's run terraform in it you can see here backend configuration has been changed because we have added extra steps in the backend configuration right so whenever we do that one we need to run this terraform in it reconfigure so i will just copy this one and paste it sorry it is not properly pasted terraform init minus reconfigure so we are just updating our backend once again with our current updates okay initialization has been completed now terraform plan we are just trying to see what it is going to do it should create multiple resources okay it is throwing an error error acquiring the state lock anyway you can see here acquiring the state lock because our s3 backend has been enabled right so that's why it is looking for the state lock but we haven't created our dynamo db table okay that is the reason it is throwing an error so before updating our s3 backend we should have the s3 bucket as well as dynamo db table as well because otherwise uh, it uh, try to use this dynamo db table which doesn't exist at all to overcome this problem for now we will skip the lock we don't want to enforce the log uh, for this one so terraform sorry so terraform plan minus lock is equal to false okay this is going to disable the lock for now because to lock it first we need a data dynamo db dynamo db not yet created at all okay and uh, this i have seen just uh, read this error and i'm just following it so you can see here for to add that is versioning we need to add and uh, next thing is s3 bucket encryption next thing public access disabled and dynamo db table okay now we will run the terraform apply apply minus lock because uh, we haven't created resource yet right so even to create also we need to do the lock false okay yes to create even we can give auto approve directly to create it okay great so you can see here dynamo db table and s3 bucket arn these two came and which means that our resources has been successfully created now it's time to test it out as two users we will try to run the terraform apply and it should not allow one user until unless other users terraform apply command completely executed so before demonstrating this one i would like to give small update that i have released three new courses on udemy platform that is devops project workshop 2 over here i have discussed how to write jenkins files even terraform prometheus grafana eks cluster all these things i have discussed you can check it out and also we have released shopping portal app in the kubernetes microservices we are using around 10 to 12 microservices to set up the kubernetes cluster you can check it out this is terraform with jenkins for aws 3 tier architecture how to create aws 3 tier architecture by using terraform and jenkins you can check out this and also follow me on linkedin if you follow me on linkedin whatever latest articles i am writing 
you will see those and also if you accomplish something with help of our courses you can just tag me so i'm here to congratulate you and if you want to connect with me personally you can follow me on instagram and if i am visiting your places we can connect personally if you are connected with me on instagram okay now let's jump back to our discussion so to demonstrate this one i am just going to do some changes okay so i am just removing this last output line so we are making some changes to our terraform code now let's try to terraform apply we should run whenever we run it you can see that it is acquiring the state lock it is locking and i will try to run same terraform apply from the other terminal and it should not allow me to run this one why because we are already running a terraform uh, terraform apply command you can see here acquiring the state lock this may take some time it is trying to acquire the lock but it didn't acquire error acquiring the state lock so other user from the so and so laptop he is trying to already he, sorry he is using it so you cannot able to do the further action and if i go over here it should continue to proceed so let me do s and even one more test if i do so now actual changes are applying so still okay if it is running okay it's completed now it should be able to acquire that command is completed right so now it should be able to allow to do the changes but there are no changes this time it doesn't throw error it just says that okay changes has been applied all right it didn't do anything it just says that no changes now we are going to talk about how to answer this question so in my environment we are running our terraform files from the local system however we are using s3 as a backend so all our terraform state files are stored in the backend and another thing is as you said there might be a chance that it might get corrupted if we don't use the proper security measurements that's the reason we have enabled versioning and encryption on this bucket and also we have removed public access to this bucket so authorized users can access it and also we have created a dynamo db for the locking mechanism whoever acquires the lock first they can able to execute the terraform apply command other people cannot able to execute until unless it is released that is how you need to answer okay and i am going to share this diagram in my linkedin hope i could see you over there thank you so much and see you in another interesting video